Hi, welcome to Pine Hollow's 10 minute field trips. My name is Anita Sanchez and we're going to be taking some field trips to some places you might not expect. So come on and explore. So today we're going to take a trip to study some pine trees. Now pine trees belong to a group of trees called conifers because they have cones. And as you can see, cones come in all different shapes and sizes from really big ones to really small ones. And you've probably found pine cones lying around in your backyard or in a park or along the street. And I always like to collect them because they're so beautiful. So conifers are trees that have cones. Most of them, but not all of them, hold on to their leaves all winter so that they're green all winter long. We call them evergreens. Now, as soon as you get to Pine Hollow, one of the first things you notice is all the beautiful pine trees growing all around. There's hundreds or maybe even thousands of pine trees at Pine Hollow. Look at all the pine cones growing on this tree. Now those are all last year's cones still on the tree. The new ones haven't grown yet. A lot of the pines at Pine Hollow are very, very tall. They grow way up to the sun because a lot of these trees are all about the same age and so they're all competing with each other for sunlight as they grow, reaching up to the sunlight which all green plants need. Most conifers have needles. Now I'm calling them needles instead of leaves, but really I should say needle shaped leaves because these needles do exactly what leaves do for the tree. They use sunlight, air, and water to make food for the tree. These are the needles of a species of pine called white pine. And even though they're called needles, they're so soft and feathery, they don't feel sharp or prickly at all. And boy, do they smell good. You might not think of a pine tree as having skin, and it doesn't have skin exactly like people do, but it does have bark. This very thick, strong, craggy bark does the same thing for the tree that our skin does for us. It keeps germs and infection out and protects the living part of the tree. One of the cool things about pine trees is that even after the tree has died, they provide habitat for lots of living things. Here's an old pine tree that's been dead for quite a while, but woodpeckers have come and pecked big holes with their sharp beaks, looking for bugs that live inside the tree and eat the dead wood. Even after a pine tree has died, when it falls to the ground, it begins to decompose, to break down into soil, and it gives new life to so many things. Look at the ferns and the moss and those cute little mushrooms that are growing on the trunk of the old pine tree. Very tiny little mushrooms. There are lots of other kinds of conifers that have cones, and most of them have needles. Here's one called a fir tree. Not fir, like you have on an animal, that's F-U-R. The tree is F-I-R, and it's got needles, and they're pretty sharp and prickly, but you can see they're a lot shorter than the pine needles. And if you look closely on the tips of the conifers this time of year, 
you'll see the new baby needles just starting to grow and the very soft tender new growth that's this year's needles just starting to get going here's another conifer a cedar tree cedar trees don't have needles they have little teeny leaves that overlap each other they almost look like snake skin a little bit Cedar trees are one of the number one favorite foods of white-tailed deer. Cedar leaves are really high in vitamin C and they're really nutritious so the deer know that it's a good winter food for them to nibble on. Now speaking of eating, conifers are the favorite food of a lot of types of animals because animals like to eat seeds and that's what cones are. They're seed holders. Under each of these scales here are seeds. And they're not here anymore. They, they're, they, there were seeds underneath there, but they're gone now. Once the pine cone is opened up, so you can get your finger underneath there, the seeds fall out. Some of them fall on the ground and new trees will grow. But some of the cones get found by animals. So this is what happens when a red squirrel starts eating a spruce cone. This isn't a pine cone, because it doesn't come from a pine tree. It comes from another type of conifer called a spruce. So the squirrel rips off, or chews off, they rip them, they chew off these scales, and they leave piles of them on the ground. They're like little potato chips. The squirrels eat the seeds that are found underneath the scales. The squirrel only got about two thirds of the way finished and this one, the squirrel must have eaten every seed on there. Sort of like when you eat corn on the cob and the cob is left behind and then the squirrel just drops it on the forest floor. So if you do collect pine cones that are lying underneath a tree, you're not harming the tree. The tree's done with them. The seeds have fallen out once the scales are open. Maybe some of the seeds have been eaten by birds or squirrels or raccoons. And hopefully some of the seeds have fallen onto good soil to grow new spruce trees and cedar trees and pine trees and fir trees. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next time.